So it's been a while since I talked about emulation on the Steam Deck. Now last year I did do a video talking about how I initially got set up for emulation using EmuDeck, and how that was a really quick and easy way to go ahead and get set up to play a bunch of games from my childhood. Titles from the Game Boy, Super Nintendo, GameCube, N64, PS2, I mean really the list just goes on and on and it's an amazing piece of software. However, even though I was able to get set up, Admittedly, there were a few things that I really didn't like about my emulation setup as time went on. For example, it wasn't always easy for me to remember which hotkeys were going to be used from one emulator to the next for controlling functions like quick saves, quick loads, how to jump out of a game, how to change the aspect ratio on the fly because some games that were retro actually did support widescreen resolution, so I would have to change that from time to time. Also, something else that kind of bothered me was, as far as the artwork for the games went, most of that was organized fine, but I didn't really love having all of my games organized into collections in the Steam Deck interface. While it's pretty neat and tidy for the most part, I didn't like that in the non-Steam applications portion of the menu that it would just have like hundreds and hundreds of ROMs listed, which kind of cluttered up the space and made it hard to find other non-Steam applications that I wanted to use that really had nothing to do with emulation. Plus, at the time when I first started exploring EmuDeck, I actually opted to put all of my ROMs on the SD card, which seemed like a good idea at the time to make sure the internal SSD didn't get filled up, but on a long enough timeline it occurred to me that I probably wouldn't want to have a scenario where if I do swap the card out that I instantly lose access to all of my ROMs. All of this is to say that while most of the emulated titles that I jumped into worked just fine, as a whole my emulation experience started to feel a little bit disconnected and unorganized. So this weekend I thought it would be a good time to go ahead and revisit my emulation setup on the Steam Deck and really just give myself a clean slate, blow everything away, and start fresh with EmuDeck again. And that seemed like a really good idea because EmuDeck's also been updated so that now the installer is even friendlier than it was before. It's not that it was cryptic to use before or anything like that, it was just a little stripped down and felt more like just running a script rather than a full-fledged user interface that was easy to navigate for someone who just might not be familiar with emulation. So today I just wanted to go over what my experience was like using this updated version of EmuDeck and really what ate up a huge chunk of my weekend as I tried to get my emulation into a better spot on the Steam Deck and hopefully keep it a little better cleaned and maintained moving forward. So first let's take a look at all of the prep work that I did to make sure that I had a good handle on all the files that were already there, the emulators, what that setup kind of looked like, to make sure that I knew what needed to be deleted and what needed to be backed up before I actually launched the EmuDeck installer proper. For starters, again, I wanted a clean slate to work with, so I set out clearing out almost everything that was left over from my prior emulation attempt. This meant going through and backing up all of my ROMs to an external SSD that I keep plugged into my dock for extra storage when I'm in desktop mode. However, it's not formatted with the Steam OS file system or anything, rather it's just formatted with XFAT so that I can plug it into other computers to copy files around. Now after my ROM files themselves were out of the way, I needed to get the gigantic list of ROMs that was cluttering up my non-Steam Deck applications cleared out as well. Just deleting the files from their original location won't clear out the entries from this interface. Now I could have just deleted them one at a time, but that would have taken forever, so instead I went into Steam ROM Manager and made sure to only select Emulation Station and none of the individual systems and regenerated the app list. This made pretty short work of cleaning up the interface, and after doing that and returning to game mode it looked much cleaner. Although I did take a quick break here to clean up the artwork for things like Game Pass, the Heroic Launcher, and a couple of fan games that I had loaded to make it look much better. With that out of the way, it was time to get ready to run the new MU deck. I say new because when I first used it last year, it was more of a script that would run, automatically placing your emulators and setting up a folder structure for where you wanted your ROMs to live. At the time, I figured I would keep them on the SD card, but this year I really wanted to move them over to my internal SSD, again, just in the interest of making sure my ROMs remained available even if I swapped out the card. Before I got started with the new installer, I went ahead and made a folder on my desktop called EmuDeck Legacy and dragged the previous icons I'd placed on my desktop in there just to be safe. I could have just deleted them, but I wanted to make sure I still had them just in case something went wrong. Plus the desktop shortcut I had for returning to game mode still works just fine, and I ended up keeping this file around after I let the new emu deck do its thing, but we can get into that later. Also, I should point out that even though I cleared my ROMs for the moment, I did not go through and uninstall all of the emulators manually. I left them as is, reasoning that emu deck would probably update them or at the very least overwrite them during the installation process. So with the ROMs now cleared out and having now cleaned up my desktop for my prior EmuDeck installation, now it was time for me to go ahead and try the new EmuDeck installer. And let me tell you, it is way cleaner and more approachable than it used to be. For starters, it actually looks like a desktop application installer that's very familiar if you've ever installed something in Windows before. From the outset, I chose custom rather than easy mode, just so I could see what options it would let me fine tune. After choosing to store my ROM structure on the internal SSD, next it was time to choose which emulators to install. I pretty much left all of these at the default, though I did only choose Yuzu for Switch emulation, mostly because I don't know how hot I'll be on Switch emulation, and I figured I'd only want to mess with one of them to start, and I could always install the other one later if needed. 
Weirdly enough, I did decide to leave Primax installed, which lets you use mouse and keyboard controls when playing the Metroid Prime trilogy, but honestly, I really doubt that I'll ever use this, especially considering I just pre-ordered a physical copy of the Metroid Prime remaster that was just announced, and I just can't wait to see how that looks on the OLED Switch. But I digress. After sorting out my storage locations and emulators, Emudeck helpfully allowed me to choose some convenience options. These were things like enabling autosaves for when you close out of a game, and then also aspect ratios, bezels, and shaders if you want to more closely mirror the feel of an original retro console. I enabled some of these options, though later I did disable autosaving since I had one game crash on me and then I got sort of stuck in an infinite loop until I figured out how to force the emulator to restart the game from the beginning. I don't think it was the game's fault per se, rather I think it was because I was just being impatient using the fast forward functionality to kind of rush through the Silent Hill introduction, and I think it just kind of bugged out on me. Now on the next screen I let Emudeck install some homebrew games as well, because why not? And then finally I selected the theme that I wanted to use for Emulation Station, which would serve as the new portal to all of my ROMs. I ended up going for the Epic Noir theme, mostly because I felt it looked the cleanest. With all of my options selected, Emudeck gave me a very helpful overview of exactly what it would install, what it would configure, and ultimately what customizations would be in place. So I let it do its thing and went ahead and watched the install log while I was at it. And after it was completed, I started copying my games back over to the folder structure that it had created on the SSD. And then finally, I reran Steam ROM Manager from the Tools and Stuff button in the installer launcher. However, rather than have it add all of my games to the deck like it did before, again, this time I only checked the slider for Emulation Station DE, so it would only place that icon in the non-Steam Applications portion of my game interface. However, now that I had everything installed and configured and all the ROM files where they were supposed to be in the folder structure, and I had the icon set up for Emulation Station now in the game interface, there was still one more step to complete, and that was placing BIOS files for systems that either require it, or at least run a lot better when you have them present. Now, the thing about these, I can't tell you where to find BIOS files for systems, but it's pretty easy to find if you just do a little bit of searching online. But thankfully, the Tools and Stuff section also includes a BIOS checker, so you can run this after you've placed your files in the appropriate directory and hit the Check Again button until all of the icons go green for the systems that you're working on to make sure that you're ready to go. And with that, I was ready to go and decided to go ahead and launch Emulation Station, and I was happy to see that all of my games showed up just fine. I did admittedly have to do a little bit of cleanup on some of the names there. And beyond that, I also went into the Emulation Station menu to run its scraper, which sort of serves the same function as Steam ROM Manager does, where it reaches out to repositories and then pulls down the metadata for games, including the descriptions, box art, short videos of gameplay if you want, and I have to say, it looks really, really clean after everything's said and done. I knew I'd still have to go and clean up some of the entries later, but for now everything was looking good, and I already loved that everything was sort of siloed off within this interface, that way my main Steam Deck interface could remain focused on just a handful of non-Steam applications and a few fan games rather than just like this gigantic alphabetized list of intermingled console games. So with the ROMs at least accessible and launchable now with an emulation station, I went ahead and jumped in and started testing games across various systems like the Dreamcast, PS2, PS1, GameCube, Game Boy Advance, PSP, SNES, pretty much just any system that I personally had some favorites on. Now one of the things that I was most concerned about with this new setup was I wanted to make sure that hotkeys were universal from one emulator to the next, meaning that I would put in the same button command to do a quick save, quick load, quit out of the game, and so on. Thankfully, Emudeck really does deliver on that promise and everything that it sets up for you seems to adhere to this standard. There was one exception with the PSP emulator, which was running off of PPSSPP. I tried digging into its hotkey settings, which had to be accessed by holding the Steam button and hitting left on the D-pad, but I could only figure out how to set them to L1 and R1 initially. But after I updated it and restarted the Steam Deck, it looks like Emulation Station started calling RetroArch rather than PPSSPP directly, and then it worked like the others did, so really just a temporary setback. So now that I could confidently jump into any one of these systems and make sure I could, you know, save my data, load my data, back out of games as needed, I decided it was time to go ahead and start jumping in and playing a bunch of games just to see how they felt. On the GameCube, I went for Star Fox Assault at first, and it played absolutely wonderfully. Maybe a little bit of chugging during initial load-ins or cutscenes, but the moment-to-moment -moment action remained smooth and enjoyable, and man, I know everyone is pumped for Metroid at the moment, but when are we going to get another Star Fox game, because this was thoroughly fun. Next up, I tried out some Simpsons Hit and Run on GameCube, which was very playable, but it also seemed to have some noticeable dips during the gameplay at certain points. I mean, it wasn't unplayable or anything like that, but it was definitely more noticeable than what I saw in Star Fox. On the PS2, I fired up Metal Gear Solid 2, and while I'm definitely rusty, it seemed to maintain a solid 60 FPS. I also took this opportunity to try out Silent Hill 3, because historically I've encountered graphical issues with a lot of Silent Hill games in the past when trying to run them on an emulator, but 3 looked as good as I remember and still holds up as one of the best looking games from that era. And thankfully this time around I didn't catch any graphical hitches or weird lines on the screen or problems with lighting, which is always a pretty big focal point in survival horror games. On the Dreamcast, I went back to my tried and true Dynamite Cop, which I love so much and I will never stop singing the praises of this game, and I also threw in some zombie revenge for good measure as well. 
And both of these performed really well, although to be fair, at some point I should probably try some heavier hitters on the Dreamcast in the vein of like Soul Calibur or Skies of Arcadia or Shenmue or something a little bit more AAA. Now the PSP might be my favorite system to emulate on the Steam Deck overall, just because it so closely matches the form factor of the deck anyways. And again, this one did give me trouble initially, but after I ran an update on the emulator itself, it seemed to work just as fine as the others, and I was able to play a little bit of Chains of Olympus, and it ran just dandy. And then finally I decided to go ahead and test out a bunch of Game Boy, NES, Super Nintendo, and Game Boy Advance games. Not really a lot to report there, these are not nearly as taxing as the other systems are to emulate, so all of these games ran pretty much flawlessly. Now clearly this isn't a comprehensive list of every conceivable system you can emulate, but I'm happy to report that hopping around a range of different systems didn't produce anything that I'd call a showstopper, and out of all of the emulation setups that I've had in the past, including how I had the deck set up last year, I gotta say, so far this feels like the most organized, reliable emulation setup that I've used so far. However, there are still a few lingering issues that I'd like to get tied up, but I wouldn't call them anything major. For starters, I would like to get the names cleaned up on a few of the entries that are just kind of named weird in the interface. Also, I noticed that for a lot of the SNES games that I have, it's actually showing up as the Super Famicom carts and artwork, which is not a huge deal, and I'm not sure if that's because some of the ROMs I used were for a different region, or if it's just that I missed something obvious in the scraper settings. Also, initially, my PlayStation games were showing up twice for each title in the emulation station interface, which I believe was because there's a .q and .bin file for both. Now, I'm positive that this is a problem somebody has already solved and I just probably need to do a little bit more research on it. However, my initial inclination was to just go ahead and delete the Q file since I read somewhere that that's not always needed and that did seem to be the case until I tried to fire up Einhander which completely tanked, probably because it needed that Q file I just deleted. So yeah, deleting that was probably ill-advised and I've probably got some work to do there. But again, these are pretty minor problems and things that I can probably fix on a long enough timeline, and ultimately the most important thing to me was that I could access all of these games within a single unified front end and emulation station, and I think I've accomplished that. At the end of the day, redoing everything with Emudeck didn't massively improve gameplay performance or anything like that, but it did improve my overall experience with emulation on the deck as a whole. Having everything work fairly consistently for standard emulation operations from one system to the next made the whole thing a lot more approachable. Also, the new installer was super helpful, again, with really easy to understand options and bonus tools for the more nuanced configuration options for, like, disk-based systems. And overall, I'd say that it really just did a great job at taking a lot of the guesswork out of what had historically been a lot of trial and error for me. So if you've been putting off exploring emulation on the Steam Deck just because you were worried about all of that technical nuance, I can't say that Emudeck takes all of the tankering out of the process because it definitely doesn't, but it's definitely a cleaner, more approachable way to get it done than a lot of the other options that I've seen out there. And speaking personally, anytime I get the notion that I'm going to spend a whole weekend redoing all of my emulators, Emudeck will be my first stop. All right, so that's it for this one. Really, I just wanted to go over all of the steps that I took to kind of get emulation into a more manageable place, I think, on my own Steam Deck. Now, if you have any questions about that or anything that I didn't explore very well, let me know in the comments below. I will do my best to answer them. Or if you're just somebody who's old hat at emulation on the deck and you have any advice for me, I would definitely love to hear about that. So anyways, as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch videos here. It means a lot to me. Have an amazing day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.